Hey guys, this movie we are talking about central nervous system development. The first lecture that we just delivered was about the development of the brain and the gastrulation phase and neurulation phase and bilaminar germ disc to trilaminar germ disc and how does the neural tube come together and neural, neural crest come together, neural plate forms, neural pores, what is their action, when do they close and all that. So, we have done all that structure and the brain formation before. This is the second lecture where we will be talking about the spinal cord development. So, this assumes that you have studied that lecture or you know how the neural tube is formed and neural crest cells are formed and we will now see how do they become spinal cord. From the USMLE, from the steps point of view, most of the time they are going to be concerned about number one, if the neuropores do not close, how would you detect that? Number two, what would be the issue when the neuropores do not close? Number three, when the, the spinal cord is forming, what part of the neural tube and neural crest cells give rise to various structures associated with the spinal cord. So, let us very quickly look at what are the various structures that we should know about and then we will start doing the embryology. I have drawn some pieces before because we talked about it before, did not want to waste time drawing that again. So, here it is the spinal cord, spinal cord the things that you should know from embryological point of view. Gray matter, this gray matter here is divided into dorsal horn intermedial lateral horn and ventral horn, three horns, dorsal, sensory, intermedial lateral, not throughout the length, but sympathetic and then ventral horn throughout the length is the motor, that is one thing. Secondly, the spinal nerve is made of, the spinal nerve is made of sensory fibers coming back towards the spinal cord motor fibers going to the various you know uh, muscles and stuff like that and then sympathetic fibers which are preganglionic and postganglionic there is a chain sympathetic change and a chain around the spinal cord preganglionic fibers come out from the intermedial lateral horn and go into the ganglion and then postganglionic fibers come out of the ganglion and join back the spinal nerve so if this was a ganglion here let us make this a ganglion. Preganglionic fibers would go into the ganglion through the spinal cord, that is what is called the white ramus. And then the postganglionic fibers, which are not myelinated, they come out of there and join the spinal nerve again, and that is called the gray ramus communicans. So, we should be also able to know how the sympathetic preganglionic and postganglionic fibers come together. Then, we also need to understand the craniosacral outflow of the parasympathetic and how do the fibers come from where do these fibers come from? Why is this clinically important? Look, the chromoph chromophin fibers, the suprarenal gland fibers, the fibers, the ganglions present in the colon causing mega, if the, they are absent cause, causing megacolon, these are all clinical scenario, scenarios and situations where if the development is wrong, they give rise to various diseases that you should know about. So, these structures should be known. How does the white matter come together? What is the what is the lining of the central canal, the ependymal cell, where did they come from? And then how is the motor nerve formed and the sensory nerve formed? How are the sympathetic preganglionic and postganglionic formed and how are the parasympathetic preganglionic and postganglionic fibers formed? So, let us start talking about it. Remember in the last lecture we did this, we said we had the ectoderm. or epiblast in the beginning, below that in the developing embryo were the neural crest cells. Neural tube was present this all the structure was induced for formation by the notochord which had developed before the rest of the structure by the cells, bottle cells moving down the primitive streak and primitive node in the epiblast and then they went and made the, the notochord which induced the mesenchyme and the nervous system called the process of the notochord and the trilaminar germ disc was called the gastrulation process and the notochord induced a neurulation process which would start making the nervous system. So, we talked about it and then we had this epi hypoblast layer 
the layer that was connected to the yolk sac, this is the layer connected to the amniotic system, amniotic pore. So, we had done this, we had even talked about the somites here and remember, remember if not please um, watch the lecture on the development of the brain. So, now let us say if we pick up this embryo, this developing embryo and stand him up, then the notochord remove the, remove the endoderm. So, endoderm was here, remove it, you see the notochord, I have removed the mesoderm around this. So, you, you are not seeing the mesoderm, remaining mesoderm there, you are just seeing the notochord. Behind the notochord, you are seeing this spinal neural tube. On the sides of the neural tube, you are seeing the neural crest cells. Behind that, will actually be the ectoderm. This layer, ectodermal layer will be behind this all. So, this is the structure. So, I have removed some structures in the front. Now, the question is, we just have to make the spinal cord. We have done the orientation of how the embryo develops and how these structures form. Now, we are just going to talk about the neural tube here in the spinal cord region and see how that forms and the neural crest cells and see how these structures form. So, it is very, very simple. So, let us start. First of all, we will start from the neural tube. The neural tube itself, I am going to take a slice. The neural tube is going to look like in the beginning, like this. This is the neural tube. These cells, there is a cavity in it. Then there are the cells, these are called neuroepithelial cells, epithelial cells. This is what is important, the neuroepithelial cells. Why? Because neuroepithelial cells are going to give rise to the whole gray matter structure present inside the spinal cord. So, they would create a, a layer that is called mantle layer, which would then divide into the alar layer and the basal layer and they would give rise to the gray matter. Once these neuroepithelial, so this is a USMLE question, once these neuroepithelial cells have divided enough to create the mantle layer, which we will talk about and created the gray matter, they would no, stop further dividing and they will then get converted to a final state cell, which is called the ependymal cell. So, ependymal cells throughout the lining are the actual, actual neuroepiblast cells. These are the ones that gave rise to the whole nervous system. So, neuroepithelial cells are present here, they would start giving off, they would start dividing and giving off new cells that would make mental layer. So, if you look at this structure, I am going to make that here, the, this structure is now going to look like this. Here is the so this is the original neural tube area, neuroepithelium. This is the central canal in this spinal cord. This is the developing, this is the developing spinal cord. I took a section of it and we are seeing inside it. Now, this is the anterior side, this is the posterior side or ventral side and dorsal side. On the dorsal side, the gray matter that would develop here is called Alar plate. The gray matter on the dorsal side that is coming from the neural epithelium is called the alar plate. Then the gray matter on the anterior side or the ventral side that would form is the basal plate. Basal because it is on the basal side, basal plate. So, you can actually say from here now that the basal plate would give rise to the motor fibers and alar plate would give rise to the sensory fiber, but not exactly true here. 
So, we will talk about it that what is wrong here. Then the, the sulcus between the two is called sulcus limitans. So, sulcus limitans is the sulcus between the two and then in the thoracic and, and the um, upper lumbar area actually cervical and thoracic area you will see the intermediate plate as well intermediate plate developing too. This is going to become the intermediate lateral horn which is sympathetic. So, all of a sudden you are seeing the origin of four cells in front of us. What are the four cells? These cells neuroepithelial cells that are giving rise to all the other cells here. These in future will become ependymal cells cool. So, that is one type of cells we are seeing. Ependymal cells what is their function? Number one they line the cavities, number two they help they, they filter out the CSF and so they help with the choroid plexus to secrete the CSF and then they do some other functions as well with the uh, blood brain barrier we will talk about it. Now, on the basal side the motor neurons, so that is the second type. Third type you are seeing intermediate lateral that would become the preganglionic sympathetic fibers and fourth type is the sensory fibers. The only thing on the sensory fiber, this is what I want you to remember please. Sensory fibers come in this spinal cord from outside, then there is sensory gray matter and then the second order neurons go up or sometimes first order neurons go up like nucleus gracilis and cuneatus sorry not nucleus the tracts and then they relay in the medulla. The fibers that are here are not the fibers that are coming in. So, the sensory nerve fibers coming into the spinal cord do not originate from here. Why? Because they are going to come from outside. So, we will see how where do they come from, but ependymal cell fibers will be formed from the neuroepithelial motor nerve fiber will be formed, will be formed from the basal plate. So, then motor nerve gray matter would appear here and then the nerve would come out. So, remember this now there is a area on the posterior side which is called this area is called roof plate, roof plate and then of course, a similar area on the anterior side is called floor plate. Now, remember this please note it down roof plate and floor plate do not give rise to gray matter. Aller plate gives rise to gray matter, basal plate gives rise to gray matter, but roof plate and floor plate do not number one. Number two, the rest of all of the area here is called marginal zone. So, this all, all of it is called marginal layer of marginal zone. This would end up being the white matter where various tracts are coming down and going up and myelinated fibers are crossing, no gray matter will be present here. Similarly, roof plate and aller plate will not have any gray matter in there, there will be crossing fibers as well which are white matter fibers. So, that is the basic structure that is going to give rise to various things in the spinal cord. Now, let us figure out presympathetic, post sympathetic sorry pre ganglionic sympathetic, post ganglionic sympathetic nerve, the sensory nerve and then the motor nerve how are these formed. So, what happens is this the neuroepithelial cells they differentiate, they replicate, they divide then the cell comes out onto the basal side. What happens is in the beginning the cell comes out as a bipolar cell. So, the cell comes out. So, if this was a cell neuroblast cell it would come out as a bipolar cell, then it would become apolar again when it reaches these plates. After becoming apolar, it would then differentiate into multipolar having an exon and then multiple dendroids and would become multipolar, multipolar, bipolar 
apolar before, apolar in the intermediate and then multipolar. So, remember that please. Okay, so, now what happens is let us talk about the motor first. We saw that we have apolar, bipolar, apolar and then multipolar cells they come out here. So, let us say this is a, a motor neuron, it develops its exon, the exon would come out from the interior side. It will be in most cases myelinated as well with the Schwann cells, Schwann cells are also going to be originating here. What is the origin of this Schwann cell? That is not from inside here, origin is from the neural crest cells. So, the neural crest cells would give rise to a Schwann cell that would myelinate the exon here. So, that is a motor fiber. How about the sensory fiber? Look, this sensory gray matter that would develop here is going to be the gray matter that is going to be the second order neuron, not the first order. So, where are the first order neurons then? So, let us make the first order neurons here. What happens is, the first order neurons develop from the neural crest cell, so neural crest cells. They are sitting outside, they make sympathetic ganglions, they make sensory nerve fibers. So, neural sensory nerve fiber are coming from the neural crest cell, then they are, remember they are the pseudo unipolar neurons present in the sensory nerve ganglion. So, from here the nerve fiber would come in and either relay here or give a branch and then go up on the same side which is the gracilis and cuneatus or move to the other side and go up which is the anterolateral system. Whatever is their situation, the fiber is coming from outside. The sensory nerve fiber in the spinal nerve is actually given, takes origin from neural crest cells. Now, so what, what about the sensory nerve fibers here or the sensory nerve uh, neurons here? The neuron here are going to be the ones that would be the second order. So, either they will cross over to the other side and go up second order neurons. So, the second order neurons, so they will become the internuncial neurons, the intermediate neurons that would then relay onto the interior motor neurons and then go from there. So, these sensory horn cells are not the primary first order sensory neurons, please remember that. The first order are coming from the neural crest cells. The first order, the second order, the lower motor neuron is coming from the neuroepithelium from the basal, basal plate. Now, what about this intermediate horn? We know that the intermediate horn makes the preganglionic sympathetic fibers. So, if there was a sympathetic ganglion here, this would give rise to preganglionic sympathetic fiber. They are myelinated by the Schwann cell. The Schwann cell come from the neural crest cells. These fibers would also come out with the ventral motor root and remember they go to the, because they are myelinated, they are white, they would join the spinal cord and they are called the white ramus because they are myelinated. Now, inside the ganglion, so if I make the ganglion here, so they have gone in the sympathetic ganglion. In there, the post ganglionic nerve fiber in the sympathetic, I am going to make it in green. The post ganglionic fiber in the sympathetic ganglion are going to come from neural crest cell as well. So, see everything outside is coming from the neural crest cells. The neural crest cell is going to make the post ganglionic sympathetic. Now, these are not myelinated because they are not myelinated, they will get out and they will join, rejoin the spinal nerve and this would be a gray ramus. So, gray ramus communication communicants, the fiber in there are coming from the, from the neural crest cells. So, we are seeing two structures now, post ganglionic sympathetic plus the sensory first order neurons are coming from the neural crest cells. We also saw the Schwann cells are also coming from the neural crest cells. You would also see that the suprarenal gland, the chromaffin, the, the fiber sitting in there are also coming from the, uh, the neural crest cell fibers. They also make the C cell, they also make the enterochromaffin fibers. Then the neural crest cells would also make the ganglions that would go and live in the GIT. So, the GIT systems ganglion are originating from the neural crest cells as well. Finally, one important thing here, the colon and the rectum, the ganglions there, sometimes they do not form correctly because of the my problem with the migration of the neural crest cells resulting into the Hirschsprung's disease or the uh, hereditary megacolon.
Okay, so what is left now? So we've gotten the dorsal horn, alar plate, ventral horn, motor plate, basal plate. Now the central canal. Once these neuroepiblast cells have stopped dividing, they've given rise to the gray matter. They then cells would then be become the ependymal cells, and that is what would become the central canal. Um, we've talked about the sympathetic, preganglionic, and postganglionic. How about the parasympathetic? So parasympathetic, preganglionic is coming from the cranial regions coming from the cranial region. So, what are the fibers in the cranial region? Remember the, uh, the prosencephalon, mesencephalon and diencephalon, these are the structures that are going to give rise to the preganglionic uh, parasympathetic fiber. They are very similar to the preganglionic sympathetic because they are taking origin from the neural tube. Postganglionic parasympathetic would also be from the, the neural crest cells. So, that is the structure various structures that would come from the spinal cord. I just need to figure out if I am missing anything. I think not. That is it. So, CSF coming from the ependymal cells and these are also the neuroepithelial cells. Thank you very much.